In the headlines, renewed hope for policyholders of the failed British American insurance company Bico, and an inventory of Dominica's forest in the cards. Environmental Health Department commended for its work in food safety. I am Lurian Graham Carter with the Channel 5 News. Details after this. In the news, plans continue locally to recover monies to policyholders of the failed British American Insurance Company. Idono John Baptist reports. The judicial managers of BICO, together with governments of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union, announced in 2012 an agreement to sell part of the business to Sajiko Life Incorporated, another regional insurance company. A meeting took place last week to explain to policyholders what has gone on over the last five years in the court-supervised rescue plan of the company. The man overseeing that process for Dominica is Frank Miles. He told Channel 5 News that the meeting advised policyholders on the way forward for judicial management. It included only the policyholders of British American who have not been dealt with before today by other means. So effectively we have policyholders, um, we call them executive flexible premium policyholders, persons who have in excess of 30000 dollars invested in the company and also persons who should have received monies under the annuity relief programs but who for one reason or another have not collected their checks so this was aimed specifically at those persons when it went into this judicial management it ceased trading all the directors demitted office and the judicial managers were the ones responsible for trying to in a sense satisfy the claims of the policyholders and eventually shut the company down Miles says the judicial managers have proposed the course they would have to take to make payments to policyholders. However, a legal framework must be put in place before they can do so. We went through all the series of activity, activities we've undertaken, namely the sale off of the life portfolio to Sajiko, the sale of the, of the property portfolio to Caribbean Alliance, we spoke about the health fund that was created to discharge all the health claims made by the various policyholders. And we also spoke about a distribution that was made, an annuity relief program with the assistance of the governments to the various policyholders. We are at a stage where we've accumulated some monies and we thought it appropriate that we have a dividend and we advise the policyholders how they could vote on the whole process. London-based KPMG Insurance Solutions Company has been brought in to help come up with a plan of arrangement to enable BICO to pay out the refunds it holds to policyholders. Well, the way forward is we're going to promote a plan of arrangement, which is an, uh, a superior alternative to a liquidation, which would be the alternative. Um, a liquidation would be a very costly and very inefficient process because it involves multiple jurisdictions. BICO operated over nine jurisdictions. It's a Bahamian company and operated uh, throughout the Eastern Caribbean. If we had to do a liquidation to distribute the funds, we'd have to have a separate process in each island and policyholders would claim, have the entitled to claim each of those jurisdictions. The plan allows us to have pull all the funds together and have one claim, so policyholders will make one claim in one uh, uh, jurisdiction for their, their dividends. So it makes it a much more efficient and cost-effective process. Ashbourne says the legislation which is required to implement that arrangement has already been enacted in three countries including St. Kitts and Nevis and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It will be hopefully enacted very shortly in other jurisdictions uh, and once that's enact, it's enacted, we can, well, once it's enacted at least in the Bahamas, we can promote the scheme and that would mean we send out the, the, the scheme documentation and the voting forms to policyholders and then they can vote on it. Assuming it's approved by the policyholders, it will then be uh, sanctioned by the court and then we can move forward and just make an initial distribution to policyholders. And that will be likely in the order of around the initial distribution, about 15%. An inventory of Dominica's forest is on the cards for this year. That's according to the Director of Forestry, Wildlife and Parks, Mitchington Burton. We're planning to have, probably sometime later this year, hopefully to undergo um, a, a forest, a comprehensive forest inventory. 
we haven't had one for, for a number of years now, almost a decade to have a, um, almost two decades really, have a serious forest inventory to be able to, 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 to quantify and, 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 and monitor what is actually there. One of the key um, importance of the inventory is to collect data. Data is very, very important. You know what is the, the state of your forest, where, you know, what is happening to, to, you know, to your, your different forest species, etc. And you can monitor them over a period of time. But additionally, we're hoping that um, the, 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 the inventory that we, we will carry out will be more than just the, the normal counting of trees and seeing what species are where and you know how much, how much forest that you have. Burton says the country can see financial benefits from the inventory exercise by showing its carbon capture through the United Nations Framework on Climate Change Program. Under this framework is a program to reduce emissions from deforestation and forest degradation known as RED. It was mainly geared initially for, for a payment scheme to encourage countries largely deforested to plant trees so, so that, they, that they would be able to get monies to finance planting of trees. Countries like Dominica, where we, have, we contribute very little to climate change, but our forests capture a lot of the carbon which is emitted across the world that we, if we can actually show through proper monitoring, then we can actually, through the carbon payment scheme, in the future be able to actually even, through, through, through that under the United Nations Framework of Con Convention on Climate Change, get actual money for preserving our forests. Dominique and the rest of the world observe Monday, the 21st of March, as International Day of Forest, which this year is being held under the theme Forest and Water Sustain Life and Livelihoods. In housing, the Silver Lake housing revolution, which recently experienced minor setbacks, is back on track and set to be completed soon. The $1 million apartment complex, which forms part of Phase 2 of the Silver Lake housing revolution, is located right next to the first apartment complex. We're looking within the next um, four months or so, if all goes well, because um, I hope that we don't have too much of an adverse weather system. But if everything were to go well within the next, let's say, three to four months, we should be well on our way. Because as you see now, we are just going up to the last store, you know, the last um, section of the building. So we hope to complete that section that we are in now within the next, um, by next week and get it in and then start work on the final floor. The apartments which are being constructed to improve the living conditions in Silver Lake began in 2013. The first phase with six apartments was completed in 2014. The second phase began in 2015. We have had some delays, as I said, to put in and work out all the little technicalities of, of, this, of this project. But we have recommended for the past um, two weeks, week and a half to two weeks or so. And we hope that from there we can sail on you know, steadily. Meanwhile, the housing revolution also presents employment opportunities for young people learning new skills in the construction industry. Contractor on the project, Felix Thomas, says currently there are seven apprentices who are learning new skills and improving on the skills they have already learned. We started off with, with 20. There are two on other project sites. Okay? On, but on this, on this site, we have about um, seven of them. And they are all rounded. We're trying to make sure that they get an all round experience in that. It's, it's a costly exercise because there it is, we have to give them the learning experience, and there are certain little short marks that they would reach that has to be corrected. But so far, um, they have been working with me, most of them, for a period of time, and they, they're not too bad at all. You know, they are keeping up very well. Well, I've started laying up blocks. Um, learning to put up profile, everything to do with construction so far. Still work. I'm appreciative of it. I learn new things, yeah, a lot of new things. Thomas says there are a few men who have worked in certain trades for a few years, but their skills require updating. He says the project will assist them with that. Another young man who has been doing construction for five years started working on phase one and hopes to update his skills. It's been a learning experience, I learn a lot of skills, different parts of the trade with different trade men. Carpentry on that phase mostly but deal, dealt with blocks since phase one and masonry. For me personally it beats staying home or not doing anything so I'd say 
it's a good good experience Thomas says the young men are fully employed with him and also assist with other construction projects on the island. Dominica is joining with UN Women in its continuing fight for gender equality around the world. Program specialist with the UN Women, Gabriel Henderson, addressed the closing ceremony of an applied arts training program for theater practitioners here last week. One is the Secretary General's Unite campaign, and that campaign is a global campaign which is encouraging um, stakeholders and people at every level in society to unite around addressing uh, violence against women and girls. And so this is a critical part of the campaign and our workshops fall within the context of this campaign as well. UN Women has also been working with stakeholders in the creative industry across the region to assist in the fight against gender-based violence. UN Women has been working with artists uh, across the region uh, in this area of gender-based violence, visual artists, performing artists, the arts, um, I think in a, particularly in our Caribbean societies, cannot be underestimated in terms of the potential and power that the arts have for creating change. And that's the critical, I think, power and ability of the arts in terms of facilitating that kind of change. UN Women is the United Nations entity for gender equality and the empowerment of women. You are watching Channel 5 News coming up. DSC Journalism Club holds Minority Forum. Welcome back. Young Dominican men currently in high school or college could also benefit from applying some of the principles contained in Prime Minister Skerritt's motivational speech to Wesley High School students on Monday. Here's more. In the speech on the importance of an attitude, behavior and outlook which coincided with career day at the all-girls school, the Prime Minister emphasized the importance of having good character and reputation in addition to securing excellent grades. Academic achievement by itself will not see you through to the promised land. While it is the first of the necessities for success, I am concerned that too many students in Dominica today are comfortable with achieving an above average pass mark and pay little attention to behavior. Too little attention to deportment. Too little attention to character and reputation. Amazingly, while in primary and secondary school you need to be competitive and strive to be tops in your class at college and university, However, a more rounded individual is preferred and sought after by employers and future associates. The Prime Minister says having a good education is important, but there are certain prerequisites to functioning effectively in today's world. He appealed to the young ladies to make full use of the opportunities afforded them at Wesley High School and to not only apply but contain themselves. Do not rush life. If you skip a stage in life, you miss out on a lot. Do not rush to adulthood. Adolescence is important. You need to experience being an adolescent so you can impart certain knowledge and wisdom to your offspring. Spend your time as a teenager being a teenager, behaving like a teenager should, and respecting yourself as a teenager or two. Those seven years come and go very fast. There is no need to rush them. The Environmental Health Department has been commended for its work in food safety in Dominica. The remarks came from Parliamentary Secretary in the Ministry of Health. Ivo Stevenson says the work of the department has helped to keep the Dominican public safe from outbreaks of foodborne diseases. The Environmental Health Department has made significant achievements in food safety, which includes training of over 2,000 food safety workers annually, annual certification of 85% of food handlers, inspection of over 80% of food establishments annually, introduction of mass gathering surveillance, at major festivals and activities, 
the inspection of over 80% of imported foods at ports of entry, the development of new food hygiene regulations. Stevenson says the proper environmental health practices augur well for the country's tourism product. The Caribbean Public Health Agency, CAFA, in partnership with the Caribbean Tourism Organization, agreed to establish a regional tourism and health program in January 2014. The major objective of this program is to build a healthier, safer, better quality and more environmental friendly tourism industry which would lead to more sustainable tourism. One of the main areas of focus will be food and environmental safety assessment training and certification and the reduction of foodborne illnesses within the tourism sector. Managers of food establishments were urged to share knowledge with their staff on the importance of food safety. We in the Ministry of Health will also benefit through improved food safety practices of food establishments with subsequent impact on the reduction of foodborne illnesses. Managers will learn to implement essential food safety practices and create a culture of food safety by sharing their food safety knowledge with their employees. Stevenson spoke at the opening of a Serve Safe Food Protection Management Training and Certification Program, which started on Monday. A local service club is playing its part in cancer awareness advocacy among youth on island. This, as the Leo Club of Dominica recently held a cancer awareness poster competition among primary schools on the island, the convent prep won that competition. Cancer continues to rob our society of many mothers, fathers and children. For us to ensure that the next generation is not affected by the dreaded little disease, we must impact the next generation. It begins with us, the youth. This poster competition gave young people a chance to develop an awareness of this disease. It is our hope that this knowledge will empower them for the future to make wise decisions. Meantime, President of the Dominica Cancer Society is encouraging youth to play their part to move the Dominica Cancer Society forward. And we have a youth arm and we're trying to empower them in those areas as it relates to governance, as it relates to awareness and education of the different types of cancers, how they can be treated, how care can be accessed. And many of our youths are actually affected by cancers because we do have their parents being affected by cancers. And so we think that their involvement will ensure to some extent continuity of the organization, the mission and the goals, and also provide a place for them to get to know each other and provide support for each other. Gittens believes if the full membership is revived, the society would be better able to raise funds for its cause and have its influence better felt around the country. Currently, we have over 100 members, bordering on 200 members. But as to how active the members are, that is our challenge. What we need to do is to come up with innovative and creative and new ways of asking the public for funding or for, for any sort of support that they provide for us. And we've started, one thing that we've put in place is we're trying to establish a fundraising committee the most recent racial incidents in the United States during the election campaign have inspired the Journalism Club of the Dominica State College to host a minorities forum. The discussion on the minority experience titled Spoken in Their Own Voice sought to bring to light issues concerning people in the smaller cross-section of the Dominican population. We have the different speakers representing their communities, basically giving us an idea of their concerns, their experiences, certain misconceptions that people might have with them. So all in all, we'll be a more tolerant society and we'll have better integration of these perceived minorities in our country. When you consider certain views towards minority, if you follow the US elections, you have figures like Donald Trump and of course the hostility, perceived hostility towards minorities. So we thought it um, draw attention because although we, the goal of our forum now to educate, it's also to draw people in, to really provoke con conversation and discussion. Panelists from the Muslim, Haitian, Chinese, homosexual, Kalinago and Rastafarian communities were invited to participate in the forum. Today we have Mr. Kozi Frederick, he's a development officer at the Ministry of Kalinago Affairs. We have a businessman, Mr. Pan Jin, 
He was recommended to us by the Chinese Embassy. He's speaking on behalf of the Chinese community. We also have Mr. Bernard Aymani Shaw of the House of Nyabingi representing Rastafarians. The forum also provided an opportunity for students to question the panel. That's news, sports highlights next with Kenny Williams. Hello everyone and here are your sports highlights. First up in sports, the National Bank of Dominica had its semi-final and final matches at the Windsor Park Sports Stadium on Tuesday. So your team won today by, by five, you know, five goals to nil. What's the feeling like in, in your camp today? Well, we are very excited. I'm not sure it now, but we are very excited inside. All the hard work paid off. Since the first round, I saw you know, there's no goals going on us. All to the quarterfinals, semi-finals, no goals going on us. So I had to make mention to the, to the officials that I think it's a record in, in program in place there. I believe the team effort, everybody played a role. If you observe, I put my, I switched on players, put my friend at the back, I played the number, number eight. Shane, he had two very goals on free kick, and he played the last man, so he played very well. In the semi-final round, St. John's defeated Grandford Primary two goals to one. In game two, St. Mary's Primary defeated Woodford Hill three goals to nil. And in the third and fourth place, Woodford Hill came in third and Grandford secured fourth place. Meantime, the first round of the girls' segment of the Sports Division's NBD Primary Schools Football Championships will begin on April 12 and 13. The district competition will start on April 15. In cricket, the efforts of Tyrone Teofield, 83 not out, and Sunil Ambrose, 54 not out, helped Volcanoes avoid the cellar position when they defeated Trinidad and Tobago Red Force by an impressive seven wickets on Monday. Red Force won the toss and batted first, scoring 211 all out in the final round of the PCL Regional Four Day Tournament. Narsing Deonna Ryan top scored with nine, while Imran Khan supported with 39 for TNT. Larry Edwards took four for 77, and Kyle Mayers three for 37 for Volcanoes. Devon Smith showed the most resistance for the Winwoods, scoring 127 to help his team reach 289 all out. Tyron Teofield added 75. Imran Khan picked up four for 93 for Red Force. Trinidad in their second innings clocked out on 243. The top scorers were Kyle Hope with 57 and Yannick Otley 55. Volcanoes captain Liam Sebastian stirred up some trouble in the Red Force batting lineup, taking 5 for 63. Set 166 for victory, Volcanoes ended on 169 for 3. Tyrone Teofield batted his way to 83 not out while Sunil Ambrose chipped in with 54. On to football now, the Dominica Football Association's All-Island League continues this week with three matches on the cards. Benjamin Spark and Newtown playing field are the venues selected for the games. On Wednesday, Woodford Hill Strikers will take on East Central Young Boys at the Benjamin Park at 6 p.m. On Thursday, Buffett State Football Club will come up against Goodwill All-Stars at the Newtown playing field, while at the Benjamin Park, it will be Buster Warner versus Dubla Football Club. Both matches begin at 6 p.m. Meantime, the much-anticipated club licensing meeting between the DFA and local football clubs have been postponed due to the association's preparation for the upcoming Caribbean Cup on the weekend. However, the DFA will meet with clubs on April 2 and 9. On April 2nd, members of the DFA will meet teams of Roseau and Environs at 9.30 a.m. at the Football House in Buffett State, while at 3 p.m. they will meet with teams of Portsmouth and Environs in Portsmouth. Then on the 9th of April, it will be the turn of the teams in the Southeast and Environs at Cassie Bruce from 10 a.m. On the basketball scene, the 2016 Dominica Amateur Basketball Association's League continues Wednesday at the Massac Hardcourt. Elvis Welding Services Hornets and Tigers will meet up at 7, while at 9 it will be All-Stars versus Kelvadaru Hurricanes. In high school games, the sports division on the 20 basketball championship resumes Wednesday at the Benjamins Park. The girls of the Portsmouth Secondary will play host to Dominica Grammar School. That match is carded for 3 p.m. Finally, in sports, we can tell you that one game is on in the 2016 Big Edge Financial Express Netball League Wednesday. Spartans and Dominica's under-23 team will create some excitement at the Dominica Grammar School hard court. The time for the game is scheduled at 4.30 p.m. That's all the sports for now. I am Kenny Williams. Join us again next time. Let's find out what we should expect in the weather for the next 24 hours. 
Good evening, Dominica, and welcome to tonight's weather broadcast. I'm your presenter, Marshall Alexander. We begin by taking a look at earlier infrared satellite imagery, Omadichod, an area of convection across the southern portion of the island chain and also to the east of Dominica. Now, taking a look at visible satellite imagery, Omadi indicated some cloudiness across the southern portion of the islands and also to the east of Dominica. Today we experience cloudy conditions at first, becoming fair to partly cloudy and breezy by afternoon. Now taking a look at earlier radar imagery, what it indicated, a few scattered showers mainly across the southern portion of the island chain. Tonight's weather is expected to be fair to partly cloudy and breezy with a few brief scattered showers and tomorrow's weather an increasing cloudiness and scattered showers during the early morning period with conditions becoming fair to partly cloudy and breezy by afternoon. Sea conditions are expected to be moderate in open water with waves peaking near 8 feet. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution. Conditions for the next three days, partly cloudy to cloudy skies with some scattered showers expected on Wednesday and Thursday with cloudy conditions and scattered showers expected as we move into Friday. Breezy conditions expected to be maintained throughout the three-day period. For the rest of the Caribbean tomorrow, partly cloudy to cloudy skies, wave scattered showers can be expected throughout the entire chain tomorrow. Our international cities forecast, partly cloudy skies expected in New York and Miami, cloudy skies expected in London, and clear skies expected in Caracas and Beijing. Sunrise tomorrow will be at 6.07 a.m and sunset will be at 6.17 p.m. For more information, you can call the weather hotline at 447-5555 or visit our website at weather.gov.dm. Thanks for viewing. Have a good night. To end the news, the headlines again. Renewed hope for policyholders of the failed British American insurance company, Bico, an inventory of Dominica's forest in the cars and environmental health department commended for its work in food safety. Feel free to contact us at news at mapping2k4.com and watch our past newscast on our YouTube channel. On behalf of the production team, I am Lorraine Graham Carter. To our viewers around the world, thank you for watching.